The end of the world is not something we like to think about, especially as there are plenty of apocalypses to choose from. In 1552, an anonymous author captured his doomsday fears onto parchment. Known as the Book of Miracles, it is perhaps the world's most disturbing picture book, with scenes of calamity and chaos and eerie hybrids that defy logic. All were believed to be omens that the apocalypse was on its way. These mesmerizing images invoke a sense of dread, the kind of dread that arises from things we don't understand, with haunting creatures that inhabit our nightmares. Welcome to Strange Christian Art. This episode, The Little Book of Cosmic Horrors. The name of this book is The Book of Miracles. Now, this implies something pleasant or wonderful, but this book is far from that. Instead, it's full of disturbing visions, like the week in 1542 when the sky caught fire, or in 1550 when a pool of human blood bubbled from the ground. The sort of things that don't happen on the daily. Each one of these strange illustrations includes the year in which it happened, and a very brief description. There is no attempt, however, at an explanation. But what is the purpose of this book? Why draw such disturbing images? It's believed that this book was a warning, illustrating omens believed to have been sent by God. Omens that suggested that the apocalypse was nigh. It might explain why so many of these pictures are comets. For millennia, comets have been seen as signs of bad luck. Like in the Bayeux Tapestry, which records the transit of Halley's Comet in 1066, the same year that the Kingdom of England was conquered by the Normans. If you look closely at these illustrations, you can see silhouettes of collapsing cities in the background. The origin of this book is just as intriguing as its contents. In 2007, it anonymously surfaced in an auction house in Augsburg, Germany. No one knows who wrote it, or the journey it had been on up to this point. To me, it adds to the mystery, as well as its supernatural quality. The book has been dated to 1552, as after this year, there are no further entries. It was written during a time of conflict and upheaval, as Western Christianity split between Catholics and Protestants, a period known as the Reformation. At the time, anxieties about the end of the world reached an all-time high. The book was probably commissioned in response to those fears, to keep track of God's signs throughout history the types of signs that typically precede an apocalypse. Let's take a look inside, shall we? The first few pages depict scenes from the Bible. Taken from the Old Testament, it includes familiar stories like Noah's Ark, when God drowned the earth with a great flood, or the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, when God engulfed the town in a fiery inferno. There are other, less destructive scenes too, even one including the Old Testament's weirdest chapter, the vision of Ezekiel. Perhaps familiar to viewers of the channel, it's a fantastical glimpse of God's throne. Accompanying him are two creatures. To the left, a winged hybrid with the heads of a human, an eagle, an ox, and a lion. To the right, an interlocking set of rings with eyes on the outer rim. In Hebrew, it's referred to as an ophanim, or the wheels. It's odd to see something so unnatural, yet so apparently holy. Perhaps it's the multiple heads and eyes that make them so unnerving. These mysterious angels are bizarre, inhabiting a plane beyond human comprehension. After exploring scenes from the Bible, the book records signs that have taken place throughout history, right up to the modern day, which in this case, was the year 1552. Many of these are your classic doomsday omens. Volcanic eruptions, locust plagues, comets, they're your go-tos in apocalypse bingo. But then the book starts to get really, really strange, with illustrations of some highly unusual incidents, like the orb of 73 BC, when a golden sphere suddenly appeared above ancient Rome. According to the description, it came down to earth, rolled about, and flew back up into the air again, blocking out the sun 
entirely. There's no explanation as to what it could be. Just a very matter-of-fact description. But I think I have an idea. You see, this orb story seems to be based on an actual report from ancient Rome. In 76 BC, Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder described a very similar event. How a bright spark flew down to earth, hovered about a bit, and disappeared entirely. What he had just described was a rare meteorological phenomenon known as a bolide. These were when meteorites burn exceptionally bright in the atmosphere, giving the appearance of a glowing orb. Whilst they're incredibly rare, some have been caught on camera. Just look at this video, taken from a Russian dashcam in 2013. Where would humanity be without Russian dashcam footage? The great library of weird goings on. Going back to our image, the orb of 73 BC was probably a bolide, a burning hot meteorite which glows like an orb in the sky, just like the one Pliny the Elder seems to have described. Although by the time of this illustration, the original story had undergone a fair bit of creative embellishment. Many images feature disturbances with the sun, in 1551, the sun allegedly multiplied into five over the town of Leipzig. This picture features the sun with a bright glowing ring, followed by the devastation you'd come to expect. Some illustrations have these eerie halos and ghostly rings that illuminate the sky. Strangely, there are accounts of this very same thing outside our book, like this painting from 1535 with rings over Stockholm, Sweden. The celestial halos have a name, sun dogs, and are a real atmospheric phenomenon. They occur when atmospheric ice crystals refract the sunlight, creating an eerie halo illusion in the sky. Throughout history, sun dogs have often been mistaken for divine activity. Who could blame them? We know far more about atmospheric signs than we did back then. Now, of course, most of these events don't have a rational explanation. Like how a red warrior appeared in the sky, along with a floating crimson fortress and a shadowy army. Or in 1533, when a ghostly horse appeared over Bohemia, with a nebulous rider climbing on. That was a particularly odd year for the people of Bohemia. Late that year, the sky was also swarming with dragons wearing crowns. A highlight for me has to be the cosmic baby battle of 1536, when three celestial infants appeared to be doing battle in the sky, one is wearing the Austrian coat of arms, the other two are dressed up like Ottomans, possibly a reference to the failed Turkish siege of Vienna in 1529. With all these ultra strange events, it's doubtful whether they actually happened. However, at the same time, there's no way to prove that they didn't happen. I can dream. So far, we've seen all the strange happenings in the sky, but what about on the ground? Another core focus of the book is the various monsters, from the giant whale that caused an earthquake in Lisbon, to this hydra-like creature that was caught by fishermen and taken to Venice. Some of these beasts are very hard to spot. This scene looks pretty normal until you notice this hairy creature with a human face. I have no clue what this is, but it does look like early drawings of sloths. Now, this creature was reportedly dredged out of the Tiber River in Rome. It is the head of a donkey, the body of a human, and two faces on its backside. When I first saw this image, I immediately recognised the sketch it was based on. The same creature appears in this Protestant cartoon by Lucas Cranach the Elder. It's a caricature of the Pope, who's dressed as a demonic donkey. Even the background is the same. It appears that our illustrator might have misunderstood the image's original purpose. Instead of Protestant propaganda, he added a whole backstory about an actual monster that washed up in Rome. Unless, that is, he was secretly joining in the satire. There are other hybrid creatures just like this one, malformed and misshapen beings, both animal and human. Since ancient times, hybrids have been seen as evil, abominations that go against the laws of nature. This revulsion towards hybridity continues today. When we see a creature that shouldn't exist, we tend to label it as creepy or unsettling. Whilst hybrids have often been seen as evil, 
They were, at the same time, holy. Remember those angels at the start of the book? Those multi-bodied, multi-eyed creatures? Well, they're associated with the divine, and are therefore good? Presumably. Our book contains these opposite approaches to hybrids. On one hand, they're hellish, but on the other, they're divine. It's an uncomfortable balance, but one that's interesting to see play out before our eyes. The book ends where it started, the Bible. It now focuses on the apocalyptic visions from the book of Revelation. If you've watched my survival guide to the biblical apocalypse, you'll know all the gruesome devastation that's supposed to take place. Trumpets hailing destruction, an explosion of man-eating locusts, dragons chewing corpses, all the good stuff. The last image depicts the arrival of the beast, a multi-headed monster with ten crowns. Beside him is the Antichrist, who looks like a mix between a goat and a dog. Worshipping the arrival of these creatures are men dressed in Catholic garb. Among them are bishops, cardinals, and even the Pope. This detail confirms that whoever wrote this was most likely a Protestant, who had a bone to pick with the Catholic Church. With this foreboding image, the book draws to a close. The Book of Miracles is an incredibly strange piece of Christian art. A collection of bizarre signs, each with a unique flavour of doom and destruction. Whilst we can identify what some of these signs actually were, others defy explanation. Looking through the pages of this book, there's one word which comes to mind. Fear. Fear of the unexplained. Fear of monsters. Fear of divine judgement. You can feel this fear in every picture, as our author draws the omens of a vengeful god who one day will bring his creation to a violent end. And there's nothing we humans can do to stop it. In this way, it reminds me of a genre called cosmic horror. You'll be familiar with its most famous writer, H.P. Lovecraft, whose gothic stories of dark magic and profane deities explore the fragile limits of human knowledge. Many of Lovecraft's stories include chthonic gods like Cthulhu, an octopus-like deity that lurks at the bottom of the sea. You'll notice he relies on that same fear of hybrid monsters. Whilst Lovecraft's stories and the Book of Miracles come from different time periods and weren't connected in any way, both explore that idea of otherness. Things that don't make sense, things we can't explain. That fear of the unknown drives much of what we see in the Book of Miracles. I guess it's fortunate that none of these grim visions have come to pass. Let's hope they never will. Hey, thanks for watching. I had a great time making this, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you like this video and want to see more, why not subscribe? A like and a comment also go a really long way. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.